Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today we will be learning about the echocardiographic assessment of pulmonary arterial hypertension. As you can see in the table, all the echo parameters and measurements are mentioned that we need to assess while doing echo of a patient with suspected pulmonary hypertension. So first we will start with the assessment of pulmonary artery since we are suspecting pulmonary hypertension and then we'll move forward to the other parameters here is a better demonstration of what all views you have to take and how to measure all the parameters what is their significance their normal values for your better understanding we'll start with the assessment of pulmonary artery first all the parameters that we need to measure while assessing the pulmonary artery in the short axis view includes pulmonary regurgitation early diastolic PR velocity, pulmonary acceleration time that is PAT, mid-systolic notching and MPA diameter. Let us look at the echo images for a better understanding. So in the first image you can appreciate a red colored PR jet in the short axis view at the aortic level and the second image you can see a dilated MPA. So in the third image we can see Pulmonary acceleration time and mid-systolic notching both can be measured by putting pulse wave Doppler at the pulmonary valve in short axis view, a pad less than 100 milliseconds and the presence of systolic notching implies pulmonary hypertension. And the last image shows us the early diastolic PR velocity which can be measured by putting continuous wave Doppler at the pulmonary valve level. So the next step of assessment of pulmonary hypertension includes the ventricles and what all information we can get which will confirm the presence of pH. The parameters include RV dilatation, septal flattening, RVLV ratio, TAPSE, RV TDIS wave, tricuspid regurgitation, TAPSE PSP ratio. Most of these parameters will be measured in four chamber view. So let's look at the echo images of these parameters to have a better idea. The first two images shows dilated RA and RV. A diameter of more than 42 mm suggests a dilated RV and a area of more than 17 cm square suggests a dilated RA. The next parameter is septal flattening and RVLV ratio. Both are interrelated. Septal flattening is defined as the paradoxical motion of the IVS in systole and diastole, also known as D-shaped LV cavity. It is a sign of right heart pressure overload and an RVLV ratio of more than 1 implies septal flattening. Our next parameter is tricuspid regurgitation which will also help us to assess the pulmonary artery systolic pressure. In order to assess tricuspid regurgitation, we have to put continuous wave Doppler at the level of tricuspid valve. A TR jet velocity of more than 2.8 m per second might suggest an increase in PA pressures. A PASP of less than 35 mmHg is normal. From 35 to 45 mmHg is borderline and more than 45 mmHg is considered increased PA pressure. Our next two parameters will help us in the assessment of right ventricular function. The first image shows us the RV TDI S wave which we can get by putting TDI pulse wave Doppler at the lateral tricuspid annulus. A RV TDI S wave of less than 10 cm per second implies reduced RV function. Next on the other hand we can see an image showing TAPSE that is tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion. A TAPSE value can be obtained by putting M mode at the lateral tricuspid annulus. A TAPSE value of less than 17 cm implies reduced RV function. So lastly, the final parameter which we need to assess the pulmonary hypertension includes the assessment of inferior vena cava. While assessing the IVC, we need to see two things, the IVC diameter and its collapsibility along with respiration. So, an IVC of diameter more than 20 cm is considered dilated with a collapsibility of less than 50% and RAP of 15 mmHg which ultimately suggests increased PA pressures. And here we come to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope this video helps. 
एंड डोंट फॉरगेट टू सब्सक्राइब माई चैनल फॉर मोर सच वीडियोज़